If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, we are going to be talking about the birth of Jesus. The birth of Jesus. And I want to say right off the bat, folks, I never get tired of reading about the birth of Jesus Christ. The Christmas story. Uh, it is God in human flesh delivered to this world for you and I. Uh, it was the greatest gift that ever was given to mankind. And uh, I'm telling you, it never gets old. The birth of Jesus, let me give you the outline. You can follow us in the bulletin if you would like to. Number one, God's amazing gift. Don't you like to get gifts? Don't lie in church now, okay? You like to get gifts. But the greatest gift ever given was Jesus Christ. Number two, God's bundle of joy. If you have ever been uh, in a birth room, if you've ever been in a hospital or uh, saw a ch children or a child come, you see nothing but joy. And number three, God's first witnesses. You would not have thought those people, these men would be God's first witnesses to the birth of Christ, but uh, God had it all planned. The Bible says, the birth of Jesus, and he came to pass in those days. And again, in those days is, is before the birth of Christ. Uh, he will give uh, out names here so that if you historically want to go back and, and realize what had happened and find the exact time of Jesus' birth, you can. Uh, but folks, here's the bottom line. I believe in history, but I believe in the Word of God more than even history. Because man wrote history, God wrote the Word of God. Always follow the Word of God. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus. A decree is something that everyone has to do. It is not an option. It is not an option. You have to do this. Caesar Augustus, we know, was the Roman emperor of that day, that all the world should be registered. And I know there's been a change in wording here from New King James to Old King James, and this is still going on. Let me tell you what it really means. Not registered, you will be taxed, okay? There's two things that you have to do, all right? You have to pay taxes and you have to die. There's no options in those two. So it's no different from the time of Jesus. No, I don't like it, but I understand why it's necessary. This census uh, first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. And the census uh, here it was every 14 years in that particular period of time. Verse 3, so all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. And Joseph went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the a house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. Much is said in these two verses here. Joseph and Mary were both uh, you know, uh, from the Judea area. Bethlehem was the home of David. Bethlehem uh, uh, was 80 miles from Nazareth. Here Mary was nine months pregnant and she was probably riding a donkey, and they were going to the city. So you could see, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't an easy trip for them, especially her uh, being uh, so pregnant at this time. And the Bible says, so it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. The Bible spoke of the prophecy of Jesus' birth in Micah, Chapter 5, please turn with me to Micah. I think we need to always look at Old Testament history because it was a prophecy of what was to come. Micah chapter 5, verse 2, and it's entitled, The Coming Messiah. But you, Bethlehem, uh, though you are little among thousands of Judah, Bethlehem was a small town. It was a small population. Yet out of you shall come forth to me. And notice the me was capitalized. 
That is deity. This is God speaking to the prophet Micah. The one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from old and from everlasting. And there's over 300 prophecies, I told you, that speak in the Word of God about the birth of Jesus Christ. Over 300, and this was one of those. And notice he is the ruler, capital R. And that's why uh, so many people had a problem with Jesus while he lived, because they thought he was going to take over the Roman government. They thought he was going to set up his own kingdom. But folks, I'm telling you, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Jesus is not of this world, but he will be ruling. He will be ruling, and from everlasting means forever and ever and ever. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time that she who is in labor has given birth. Then the remnant of his brethren, and he's talking about the seed of Abraham, the seed of Abraham, God's chosen people shall return to the children of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Folks, he is what we just sang, King of kings and Lord of lords. And one day he is coming back. I'm telling you, coming back soon. I believe our redemption is nigh, folks. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and this one shall be peace. Notice the one is capitalized. Folks, I am telling you of all things Jesus is. He's a lot of things. He is hope. He is love. But he is peace. And without knowing the Prince of Peace, folks, you cannot have the peace of God in your life. So we see this amazing gift predicted more than 400 years before the birth of Christ. Now let's go back to our text. Verse 7, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room uh, for them in the inn. The firstborn son, her Son, Jesus, was her firstborn. Uh, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, folks. There was not any indication of a midwife. There was not any indication. I mean, they were in a stable, and some even think it was probably a cave. The, the, the feeding trough was where they laid the baby. And folks, they wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. And folks, that is so true still today. There was no room for Jesus at his birth. There was no room. And still, so many people leave Christ out of Christmas. Matthew, 11, Matthew 1, look at Matthew 1, talking about Jesus. Matthew 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, capital S, the Son of God. You shall call his name Jesus, which means Jehovah is salvation, for he will save his people from their sins. That was the purpose of sending Jesus to the earth. Adam and Eve had sinned. All mankind was under the curse of sin. And Jesus' plan was the virgin birth. Folks, you better believe in the virgin birth. The virgin birth is everything to Christianity. If Joseph was his biological father, he could not have been the perfect son of God. But Jesus was placed as a person of the Holy Spirit in Mary's womb, and Mary gave birth to baby Jesus. Look at verse 22. So all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with a child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Folks, I am telling you, from the beginning time, God has always been. He wasn't created. Jesus was not created. They have 
always been. They have always been, and God is with us even today. We see God's amazing gift. The second thing I'd like you to see is God's bundle of joy. God's bundle of joy. Look at verse 8. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping a watch over their flocks by night. Especially in biblical days, shepherds were so important. Okay, they were important. Now, they weren't well respected, okay? They just really wasn't, uh, you know, they, they were accused of, you know, wandering. Uh, some even were accused of stealing sheep and taking sheep themselves. But I thought it was interesting that, that God chose shepherds, you know, to be the first ones that actually saw Jesus after he was born. But think about it, folks. David, David was a shepherd. Jesus Christ himself was the good shepherd. And their job wasn't easy. You think about it, being out in the elements in all the seasons. You could think about trying to keep uh, you know, things together when there was a storm or there was rain or even ice and snow. It was a hard job. And then the Bible says in verse 9, And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Folks, I am telling you, I do not think a lot of things shook up shepherds. Okay, They fought off uh, uh, wolves. They had to fight off things that were preying on the lambs. Okay, They had to go through a lot. And when you see this verse, it is so obvious that this was an announcement. Okay, this was an angel, probably Gabriel again, because he was announcing uh, the birth of Christ. And the second thing you see here, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Folks, God is light. We are not talking about just a bright star. We are talking about a light that was almost blinding, something that they had never seen, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, and again, I've never seen an angel. I know we have angels. I know I believe we have guardian angels that look over us every day of our lives. I've never spoken to an angel. And so when an angel would speak to someone, I am telling you, uh, they would be afraid. We talked about uh, Gabriel speaking to Mary last week. It would be almost a shocking thing in our lives. And the angel said unto them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. The words there, good tidings, it's called good news, folks. Don't you like good news? Good news usually makes you happy. Good news fills you with joy, not just joy, great joy. And even at that, it's not for a few chosen people. Jesus wasn't sent just for the Jews or the Israelites. The Bible says he was sent for all people, folks. He died for everyone in this building, every race, every person that ever lived. Verse 11, for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Folks, I am telling you, he sent a Savior. We needed being saved. We needed to be rescued from our sin. He sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. These shepherds, unlike uh, you know, the wise men, last week we talked about the wise men following the star. These shepherds were following the angel, was listening to the instructions of the angels. And these shepherds were told exactly where Jesus would be. 
Because you have to understand, folks, for that to happen at that particular time, uh, you know, uh, that had to be the only place where someone named Jesus was being born. God preordained that. God's plan was this. God's plan was to lead them to the manger scene. And the Bible says in verse 13, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill to men. Why? They were praising God. These angels witnessed the birth of Jesus Christ. These angels were sent as the hallelujah hallelujah chorus that we have just sung. Folks, I love that chorus. I love that whole song. I'm telling you, I get chills on me when I hear that. Why? Because one day, we as Christians are going to sing to our Lord and Savior. Hold your finger there and go with me to Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. And we see the Lamb in Revelation 5, Jesus Christ taking the scroll. He was worthy to take that scroll. And we see as worthy is the Lamb. Then skip down to verse 11. Verse 11 in Revelation. We will be a part of this. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne. The living creatures, the elders, the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Angels, people, all rejoicing, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. Folks, Jesus is every one of these things. He is God in human flesh. He is the Holy Spirit power. He is rich in mercy. He is the wisest of all. And folks, he was the strongest. His strength was amazing. Honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as in the sea, they are all in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Folks, that same baby child, that same baby Jesus will be sitting on the throne. He will be ruling. He will be ruling during the millennium period. He will be bringing us back. The rapture of the church will happen first. We will be raptured out of there. And then after the tribulation, I'm telling you, we will come back with him. I don't know about you folks, but I cannot wait for that day. When you think about all that is going on in our world, you think of all the struggles. We have even seen this past week something that rarely happens. An E5 tornado in December in the northern part of the United States. Folks, all these things are signs that Jesus is coming soon. Read Matthew chapter 24. Wake up, folks. We have to wake up. We have to understand that Jesus is coming back to make all things right. All things. And folks, I so look forward to that day. Verse 14, Then the four and living creatures said, Amen. Amen means so be it. Amen. Every once in a while we need to say amen. We need to say hallelujah. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. That bundle of joy to Mary is going to be our Savior and our Lord. Joy means Jesus first, others second, and yourselves last. Oh folks, Christmas should be a time of joy. A time of joy. 
in our lives. Not only do we see God's amazing gift, God's bundle of joy, but God's first witnesses. Look at verse 15. So it was when the angels had gone away from, from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let's, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. I mean, I know they were just spellbound. I know uh, listening to the angels sing and making the proclamation of Jesus' birth, it was just an amazing thing. I'm sure they just stood there for a while of what was going on and what happened. And when the lights went off, when the singing stopped, I'm sure they were looking at one another and just saying, did we really see what we just saw? They were amazed at what they saw. Folks, we are going to be amazed when we see Jesus. Amazed. It, you, you can't. I mean, John uh, even said, I have not seen, ear hath not heard. No one can even fathom in their mind being in the presence of Jesus Christ. There are people who say all the time, you know, I'm going to tell him this and I'm going to tell him that. I'm going to ask him why. I believe when you first get into heaven, you will be so spellbound, you won't ask him nothing. You will simply bow down and worship our Lord and Savior. Verse 16, and they came with haste. They rushed. They ran. They didn't stop for anything and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger, just as the angel had said. And now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told of them concerning this child. And folks, this is another amazing part of the Christmas story that people don't realize what happened. Because shepherds many times would not even go into a temple Shepherds would do the lamb but, you know, and, and have the lambs for the temple. But they, again, were not highly regarded, and many didn't spend much time there. You would have thought the announce would, would come from the Jewish uh, folks and from the uh, tribes and the Judah and, and, and the Sadducees and, and, and the religious part of this day. But God chose shepherds shepherds to tell, be the first one to tell about the birth of Jesus, made widely known. When they had seen the Christ child, you could not stop them from talking. I mean, they were just, they were excited. They were in the presence of God. They saw this baby there was something different about this baby. Folks, I believe uh, that light, I believe there was a light there shining upon Jesus at that time. And just being in the presence of Jesus, they were the first ones, other than Mary and Joseph, to be in the presence of Jesus. Verse 18, And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told by the shepherds, by the shepherds. Folks, the shepherds couldn't wait to see Jesus. and They couldn't wait to tell the good news. They were more than excited about what they had seen and what they had witnesses. And they shared with everyone what they had seen. It reminds me in Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, Go there if you would, talking about God's first witnesses just after the institution of the church, just after the birth of the New Testament church. Peter and John and the disciples, after the day of Pentecost, were just excited about the Holy Spirit falling on that place. And they had healed, Peter had healed a man, and he told them, silver and gold have I none, but in the name of of Jesus Christ, you rise up and you walk, and it happened, folks. And let me say this, 
God is still in the miracle business. He's still in the miracle business. Pick up in verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. Who does that sound like? Shepherds. They were untrained. They were uneducated, most of them. They were outcast by some folks. They were shunned by others. They spent a lot of times by themselves. But God chose them to share Jesus' birth. And, and, and I, there's that word again, they marveled. The same one used in Luke chapter 2. The same word, marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. Folks, I want to ask you a question today. When people are around you, can they tell you've been with Jesus? Can they tell? I'm all for witnessing. I'm all for putting it into words. But they should know just when you enter the room, just when you are around them, that there's something different about you. And they had realized that these disciples had been with Jesus. Acts chapter 1. Just turn back a few pages. And Jesus was leaving earth. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, He asked the disciples to do something for Him. He asked them before He went, and ascended into heaven. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the utter ends of the earth. Folks, what is he saying? Jesus himself, 33 years later, gave a commission to every Christian, every born again Christian, he says, You shall receive power. The Holy Spirit comes upon us when we get saved, folks. It, when we get saved, and you think about it the day you were saved, how excited you were, how happy you were, how uh, that burden had been lifted from you, and that joy of the Lord was all over you. That's the Holy Spirit power and you shall be witnesses. It doesn't say you might be witnesses. God has given us a command. A command is you shall be witnesses. And that's why, folks, during the Christmas season, it is absolutely the best time of the year to share Jesus Christ with others, to talk about the virgin birth, to share about what Jesus has done for you. And we need to do the same as the shepherds did. Now back in our text, look at verse 19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Brian just saying, Mary, did you know? Folks, I can answer that question for you. She knew. She knew who she gave birth to. She knew even in the womb, she was carrying the Son of God. She had the honor. She had the privilege of birthing Jesus Christ, her Lord and Savior. Folks, I am telling you, we, when we accepted Jesus into our life, we know, we know, we know, we know Jesus Christ. First John 5.13, these things are written that you may know that you have eternal life. So there's two things today as we leave this place I want you to see. The first thing is we need to be bold. The, the disciples were bold in their witness. The shepherds were bold in our witness. We have time left. It's the 19th. And, and folks, I'm telling you, all this week, we should be sharing Jesus Christ with others around us. And the second thing is, if you don't know Jesus Christ, 
if you are not sure, and I can help you with this, folks, if you were to die today, do you believe, do you truly believe you will go to heaven? And if you say, I'm not sure, folks, I admonish you, I beg you today, would you make sure if you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your life, it would be the best Christmas present you could ever receive. Father, thank you. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that he was born of a virgin. God, thank you that he lived 33 years perfect. He was sinless. He was truly a, the sinless Lamb of God. God, thank you that uh, he died on a cross. We crucified Jesus. We were a part of that. Our sin was a part of that. And God, I thank you that he arose again on the third day. And God, I just pray, if there's one here that doesn't know you, God, I pray that you would give them the courage just to step out, just to come down the aisle, just to know, to know that they can have eternal life, to know where their eternal destiny is, Lord. There's only two choices. One is heaven and the other is hell, Lord. And it's real. So God, I pray that you would draw lost folks to you. God, I pray that they would just come to you, the Savior, the Lord. And God, I pray also for the Christian. God, I pray. And, and Lord, we should always be bold. We should always testify and witness. But God, I pray, even in these next 10 days, that we would just really concentrate on Christmas and what it means. And God, I pray that we would share the Christmas story, that we would share the birth of Jesus Christ. And God, if there's one here that needs to rededicate their life, Lord, I pray that they would do it today. Lord, maybe someone needs to come for baptism and follow the Lord in baptism after being saved or even joining the church today. God, this is your church. This is your family. We are part of the body of believers. So God, I pray if you impress on them, if you speak to them today, they will step out. God, this is the birthday of a king. God, I pray we would celebrate it all year long. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?